Greetings, friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. I want to talk about the famous scientist from the 18th century, Isaac Newton, and some of the ideas he had about biblical prophecy. Let's start out by reading part of a report about him by WorldNet Daily. Sir Isaac Newton stated, We account the scriptures of God to be the most sublime philosophy. I find more sure marks of the authenticity in the Bible than in any profane history whatsoever. Captivated by Bible prophecy, Sir Isaac Newton wrote, Observations on the Prophecies of Daniel and the Apocalypse of St. John, published in 1733, in which he stated, Daniel was in the greatest credit amongst the Jews till the reign of Emperor, Roman Emperor Hadrian and to reject his prophecies is to reject the Christian religion, for this religion is founded upon prophecy concerning the Messiah. Isaac Newton understood that prophecy was important, and the Bible says so. For example, book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10, from the New King James Version of the Bible. Worship God, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Now, Isaac Newton warned about setting dates, when he wrote, This I mention not to assert when the time of the end shall be, but to put to stop all the rash conjectures of fanciful men who are frequently predicting the time of the end, and by doing so bring sacred prophecies into discredit as often as their predictions fail. And of course, everybody who's predicted that the Great Tribulation uh, would start by 2021 or Jesus' would return then have been proven to be wrong. Despite his condemnation of those who set a date, Isaac Newton did do so when he wrote, So then the times and time, times and a half and a time are 42 months, or 1260 days, or three years and a half, reckoning 12 months to a year and 30 days to a month, as was done in the calendar of the primitive year. And the days of the short-lived beast being put for the year's of lived kingdoms, the period of 1260 days, if dated from the complete conquest of the three kings, AC 800, will end in AC 2060. Basically, what Isaac Newton was predicting or saying there was from the time of Emperor Charlemagne's re, uh, revived Holy Roman Empire, or it's called the Holy Roman Empire, it was supposed to be revived Roman Empire, that was going to stay until 2060. And then the end would come, Jesus would return. Problem with that, several fold. One is uh, Napoleon's empire pretty much got rid of the Holy Roman Empire, so it didn't stay as it was. And secondly, I believe that for lots of reasons that 2060 is much too long. We have a video, by the way, about uh, will, for example, the United States last until 2028 that you can watch to go into some more details. Now, Isaac Newton seemed to see in the book of Revelation that the beasts were Roman and Greek. Here's something that he wrote. And the ten horns received power as kings, the same hour with the beast. At length the woman arrived at her place in temporal as well as spiritual dominion on the back of the beast, where she is nourished a time, times, and half a time from the face of the serpent, not in his kingdom, but at a distance from him. She is nourished by the merchants of the earth three times or years, and a half, or 42 months, or 1260 days. And in these prophecies, days are put for years. These characters of the woman, the little horn of the beast, agree perfectly in respect to her temporal dominion. She was the horn of the beast in respect of her spiritual dominion. She rode upon him in the form of a woman, and was his church, and committed fornication with ten kings. There's a lot of things about that we would not agree with. We don't believe that the woman who rode the beast was ever the true church, but claimed to be uh, the true church. We also don't believe that the twelve, the, the time, time, and half a times to the woman flame was 1,260 years. We think this literal uh, 1,260 days or 42 months. One of the passages that Isaac Newton was referring to was from Revelation chapter 12. So I'd like to read this starting with verse 14. 
But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she's nourished for a time times and half a times for the presence of the serpent. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. But the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which would be what we would call Church of God Christians. Now getting back to Isaac Newton, he went to Revelation 13, starting in verse 10. So let me read, or that's what he's referring to, so let me read what he wrote about this. The second beast which rose out of the earth was the church of the Greek Empire, where it had two horns like those of the Lamb, Therefore it was a church, it spoke as a dragon, and therefore it was of his religion. And it came up out of the earth, and by the consequence in his kingdom. It's called the false prophet who wrought miracles before the first beast, by which he deceived them that received his mark and worshipped the image. Now, the beast will be over a kingdom that's going to include the territories of the Latin Roman Empire, including parts that were Greek. But no, the, the second beast, the two-horned beast, while Isaac Newton is correct, it has to do with the church. We don't believe this is a direct statement regarding the Greek church. Uh, we believe that this will be some type of an anti-pope, so it will have some type of connection with the Vatican for a while anyway, but also uh, the Greek Orthodox, but we don't think it's the Greek Orthodox per se. That being said... Isaac Newton wrote something about uh, the mark of the beast. So I'd like to read this. His, his mark is cross, 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 and his name is Lateinos, and the number of his name is 666. And from different books, I saw different types of crosses. That's why we put two of them up. Interestingly, Isaac Newton is making a statement similar to the Cathari, the Cathari, some of them were Church of God people that preceded uh, Isaac Newton by quite a long time, and they stated that they believed that a uh, cross was the mark of the beast. Now, when I looked at the writings of Isaac Newton and I saw these three crosses, I was wondering if it has had anything possibly also to do with the Trinity since he put three crosses up, because I knew Isaac Newton was not Trinitarian. And so I'd like to read something that Dr. John Boyle wrote regarding Isaac Newton and the Trinity. Isaac Newton traced the doctrine of the Trinity back to Athanasius. He became convinced that before the Athanasius, the church had no Trinitarian doctrine. In the early 4th century, Athanasius was opposed by Arius, who affirmed that God the Father had primacy over Christ. In the 325 the Council of Nicaea condemned as heretical the views of Arius. Thus, as viewed by Newton, Athanasius triumphed over Arius in imposing the false doctrine of the Trinity on Christianity. According to Newton, the seventh seal began when Trinitarianism was officially ratified at the Council of Constantinople. The great apostasy was not Romanism, but Trinitarianism, the false infernal religion, to quote Newton's own words. Let me state that we, in the Continuing Church of God, do not believe that the seventh seal was opened then. Matter of fact, uh, we don't believe any of the seals were opened back then. But that we're in the process of seeing seals open now. Now, Dr. Bile mentioned Athanasius. And I'd like to read something that's called the Athanasian Creed. Now, Athanasius did not write this. This came out in the 6th century, but supposedly it's based on what he taught. Writes, whosoever desires to be saved should, above all, hold to the Catholic faith. Anyone who does not keep it whole and unbroken will doubtless perish eternally. Now, this is a Catholic faith that we worship one God in Trinity and the Trinity in unity. We must worship their Trinity in their unity and their unity in their Trinity. Anyone then who desires to be saved should think thus about the Trinity. Now, you can read this book, which I have multiple times. <laughs> From Genesis to Revelation, you will not see anything about calling upon the Trinity or needing to believe the Trinity to be saved. 
Oh yes, you can read that calling upon Jesus, and belief in Jesus needs, is necessary for salvation, but not a belief in the Trinity, which was formally adopted by the Greco-Romans and the Council of Constantinople in 381 AD. As far as the prediction of Isaac Newton on uh, fleeing, he, had some, he wrote something I find very interesting. So I'd like to read something else that he wrote. In the sixth epistle, the angel of the church in Philadelphia, Christ saith, because in the reign of the heathen Emperor Julian, Thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation by which the woman is flying the wilderness and the dragons making war with the remnant of her seed. The killing of all those who will not worship the image of the beast shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth and to distinguish them by sealing the one with the name of God in their foreheads and making the other with the mark of the beast. Him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go out no more, and I will, will write upon him the name of my God on his forehead. So the Christians of the church of Philadelphia, as many of them as overcome, are sealed with the seal of God and placed in the second temple to go out no more. So Isaac Newton believed correctly, by the way, that it was the Philadelphians that God promised to protect during the time of the Great Tribulation, but he got his times, dates way off, his timing off. Now we can confirm this if we go to the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 3, and let's start with verse 7. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things says, He who is holy, he who is true. He who has the king of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I set before you an open door, and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews but are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Then additional promises are also mentioned in Revelation. This particular promise about being kept from the hour of trial was only given to the Philadelphians. Now, Isaac Newton also wrote about the book of Revelation and the millennium. And he wrote a lot, but I do want to read several passages. He wrote... Then he, that's uh, uh, John, describes the sudden coming of the day of the Lord upon them as a thief in the night, by which is the apocalyptic phrase, and in the millennium, the thousand years, which are with God but as a day. All true Christians in that early age received this prophecy. For in all ages, as many as believe the thousand years received the apocalypse as the foundation of their opinion. And I do not know one instance to the contrary. Papias, Bishop Heropolis, a man of the apostolic age, and one of John's own disciples, did not only teach the doctrine of a thousand years, but I also asserted the Apocalypse as written by divine inspiration. Melito, who flourished next, wrote a commentary on his prophecy, and he, being Bishop of Sardis, one of the seven churches, could not be ignorant of the tradition about it, nor impose upon them. So basically he's saying early church leaders, it's not without a doubt, believed in the millennium. He also cited a bunch of uh, uh, people we wouldn't consider to be saints in the, in the church of God. And anyway, Isaac Newton was right. There is a millennium. It is coming. But it's going to start before 2060. The reality is, if you look at the last days, and Peter in Acts chapter 2 talked about the, Jesus coming in the last days and since Jesus left the earth uh, no later than 31 AD if the last days are a thousand years apiece they should be over no later than 2031 so I don't believe that 2060 which was something that Isaac Newton proposed is, is, is valid so you know, don't let anybody deceive you about biblical prophecy whether they're famous or not we, we are to do as the Apostle Paul wrote in 2 Timothy 2, starting in verse 15, and this time I'm going to read it from the Old King James. We're to study and show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, but shun profane and vain babblings, for they will 
increase unto more ungodliness. Believe what the Bible teaches. Don't accept traditions of men that are in error, including famous ones or famous councils, like the Council of Constantinople. The reality is we are getting closer to the time of the end. Many people will not see the signs. The signs are in the Bible, and they are getting closer to coming to pass. Many of them are coming to pass. And yes, books like the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation, as well as what Jesus said, are certainly applicable for the events that we're seeing today. Isaac Newton didn't live to see this day, but I hope you will live to be around when Jesus does return. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.